Hello, welcome to FM Live. My name is Mike. I'm just enjoying a little bit of leftover Halloween candy. Hopefully, everybody had a good haul. Um, but today, what we're going to talk about is weight loss programs. And we're going to make this easy because I don't want to work real hard. I spent a lot of time building up my uh, insulation for winter so I'm, I'm getting ready it gets a little cold here in Colorado you know so we want to do something a little easy to keep down the weight in your car because that's much easier than taking off weight on yourself so um, let's go ahead and get started shall we Okay, weight loss program. We are doing a topic about how to put your Miata on a diet. And you can think of this more as a, more of a guideline than an actual rule per se, because we're gonna talk about a bunch of different products um, between stock and aftermarket for what can be beneficial to shave some weight on your Miata whether you are looking to just improve how the car handles and rides on the street to if you're trying to make a race car because every ounce counts. So um, take all of this with a grain of salt because we're only going to cover certain parts from certain generations. This is more of a overview for things that you can probably do to your Miata, but we may show examples that are specific to a very particular year range. So. As I go along, I will try to answer lots and lots of questions that were asked in advance. If you did provide us with a question to our Facebook or Instagram message uh, or post about this particular topic, thank you very much. We hope to cover almost all of it. Um, and if you have questions that I didn't answer throughout this video, please leave us a comment down below towards the end of the video. We will try to answer those questions as well if I haven't answered them already. So as I mentioned earlier, my name's Mike. Thanks again for joining us. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So weight savings, um, why is it a thing? Why are people concerned about saving weight or trying to shave weight on their Miata? Well, if you are class restricted by a certain racing class that you're in, or if you're just trying to make up for a little bit of uh, power, weight to, power to weight ratio, then it's always a good thing to lose a bit of weight because that means your car has to work less to get up to the same speed or to be able to produce the same amount of acceleration as you would with more weight. So it's kind of like adding free horsepower by adding lightness, by removing heavy stuff or replacing heavier stuff with lighter stuff if need be. So as a general rule of thumb, Miata people especially, because we're always concerned about weight in our Miatas, is that it is a benefit if you want to be able to, one, accelerate quicker, but also if you want to be able to improve your handling around the corners, then that's something that your weight transfer is also taking into account. You're gonna have more significant lean and weight transfer the more weight that you're tossing around in the car. So reducing that, you're gonna have more predictable handling as well as better acceleration, and it's all dependent upon how much weight you're able to shave off the car. So you can do this as a pretty mild thing. Uh, we're going to talk about how to do weight savings as a, you know, easy, inexpensive, and more or less unobtrusive way, all the way to full-blown race car. You're ripping stuff out of the car left and right. You don't need to have those creature comforts. You're just looking to shave as much weight as possible. We're going to try to cover a lot of the high points, but go from mild to wild in this video. So. Um, one of the questions we got is, obviously, we talk about it a lot, losing weight, but can you go too far? And I like to think of a lot of modifications on these cars, whether it's shaving weight off your car or adding power or changing suspension or whatever, is that you have a sliding scale. And a lot of times there's a scale of, you know, one 
variable to the next. And for a Miata, when it comes to light weight or weight savings, we're gonna talk about a sliding scale that goes from creature comforts and low NVH and heavier to lightweight, but higher NVH and possibly fewer creature comforts and or um, just race car-ness in general, I guess you could say. So that is something that you have to keep in mind. Um, it is a bit of a sliding scale. There are some cheaters in here that you can kind of put it a little bit further on the sliding scale than maybe you could others. And it really depends on personal preference. So I won't try to define that for you, but we'll talk about it a little bit for each thing, each topic as we go past it. Okay, so let's start out with the mild options. Um, an easy option that probably everybody's Miata could benefit from is go clean the trash out. Do you have extra stuff in your glove box? Do you have like extra things rolling around in your center console? What about in your trunk? Do you have an old speaker or sub back there that's uh, not working so much or, you know, isn't doing a whole bunch back there that you've just left in the trunk? Get it out of there because that's free weight savings. Um, obviously, if it didn't come with a car from the factory, you're just adding weight so you can take it out. Free, easy, go do it. Another easy, easy thing is to remove your spare tire and your jack. Now, this is generation specific because the newer generations don't have spare tires and they don't even have jacks like this as they did in the ye olden days. But you can save about 20 pounds for a spare tire, about four pounds for the jack and the associated hardware that comes with it. So that's another pretty easy thing. You know, if you live in the city or if this is just a car that you go enjoy weekend drives or track days, you probably don't need this stuff anyway. You know, tow trucks are abundant or maybe you've got a buddy with a trailer if something happens. But you know, this is a pretty small price to, play, uh, price to pay, especially with modern tires these days. Um, another really easy thing that is, um, it's on the very small end of the scale, lug nuts. So your stock car comes with steel lug nuts. Yours might look a little bit different than this, but this is basically what you got. These are usually about two ounces and an easy thing, plus to not only lose some weight, but also dress it up a little bit, go with some nice forged aluminum lug nuts. These ones are ours, of course, and they're about one ounce. So you can literally shave half the weight off of your lug nuts by going with a good forged aluminum lug nut. Easy peasy. They're also very inexpensive, so no big deal. Another one that is very common that a lot of NA and NB owners ask about that um, I recommend all the time to just get rid of it is the intake manifold brace. That is this ugly dude right here. So this little brace, it is supposed to brace up your intake manifold and it bolts to your block right here and to your in intake manifold on the top. And Mazda thought that maybe their intake manifolds would be so floppy that they'd come off if you hit a big bump. Uh, that's simply not the case. It's not a big deal. I've had mine removed. Everybody here has had theirs removed for years and years. It's okay. You can take it off. Um, it's not a huge weight savings. It's only a pound and a half. But the big difference is that not only you're saving weight, but when you take this off, you get better access to the backside of your alternator. If you need to loosen it up to change your belt, you get better access to your oil filter. So anytime you do an oil change, you can actually reach it from the top now if you remove this brace. So it is good for weight savings, but mostly just for ease of use and access to your engine. Another big one, and this is specific to the NBs, are the exhaust manifolds. So in 99, 2000, Mazda decided to use a cast exhaust manifold. So that's this big burly dude right here. You can see it is quite a beast. And this is a catalytic converter that bolts on the bottom of it specifically for the California models. Not all the 99 2000s had this cat on here, but basically if you've got a California version of the NB1s, you have this manifold, this cat, and it's heavy. Um, these guys together, they weigh 25 pounds. And if you were to do a swap from this stuff over to the 2001 to 05 tubular manifold, 
which weighs about 10 and a half pounds, that's a pretty de decent savings. Now, you do need to consider that if you, uh, if you live in a place where emissions is a big concern, um, and obviously, federally, we can't condone that you remove a working catalytic converter, but if this is a race car, um, you potentially could do that if you're not needing to worry about emissions. So this is a good, easy weight savings. Also, the tubular manifold obviously is gonna flow better because you've got smoother, more gradual bends compared to this manifold. Now, all of the later cars, NCs, NDs, you already have a tubular style manifold that's just come stock. Also the 1.6 and the NA8 Miatas have a tubular manifold that comes stock. So why did Mazda do this? I don't know, probably emissions related, but there you go. If you've got an NB1, there's some easy weight savings. Get your manifold, get the right EGR pipe, and off you go, weight savings and power. Another common one um, that is good for the guys that like to do stock part swapping, this is again, kind of an NA specific thing, but you can kind of do it also with NDs too if you're tricky, is that the stock wheels on your NA and B Miatas, um, some of the early, early cars that had 14 inch wheels, they had very light wheel options. Some of them were as light as about 10 pounds, or there have been reports of some of the BBS model wheels that weigh slightly less than 10 pounds. I don't have any here to weigh, unfortunately, but there are people out there that have weighed them, so you're welcome to, to go down that rabbit hole if you'd like to fall down it. Um, they're very hard to find a lot of times and people want money for them, so. <laughs> there are some seven spoke wheels that came off that were 14 and seven spoke stock wheels that are not quite as rare as those BBS wheels. And those, again, I think are about 10 and a half or 11 pounds. So a little bit heavier, but if you're looking to reduce unsprung weight, Unsprung weight, okay, all right, we need to take a break and stop. Talk about unsprung weight. Unsprung weight, you've probably heard that term before. I'm sure many of you out there are probably pretty familiar with what that means, but basically any weight that's not being sprung by your suspension, so think like your wheels and tires, your brakes, your knuckles, um, some of the lower suspension components, that kind of stuff. It's not being supported by the spring or springs of your car. So that weight is important to shave if you can, if it's easy to do, which doing it with lightweight wheels is a good way to do it. Because one, obviously, with any kind of weight reduction, you're helping improve your acceleration and your um, handling small amounts. It's a good thing. But also, in, importantly for me, because I am an old guy when it comes to ride comfort, is that reducing unsprung weight lets your suspension work more efficiently. So your car, if you've got really heavy wheels or really heavy suspension components that are unsprung weight, it's crashing over bumps and um, potholes and you know anything in the road that it has to work to move around to clear those obstacles. So reducing weight makes it easier for those suspension components to move up and down and go over those obstacles and that makes the suspension much more efficient at how it moves around. And it means that your suspension doesn't have to work as hard at accommodating for those movements so it can focus more on the ride quality and comfort of you, the passenger in the car. So um, it is a good handling like performance benefit, but I personally really like reducing unsprung weight just because it's more comfortable. So if you can afford it, it's a good way to do it. Back to the wheels, factory wheels, if you can get some of the lighter ones, look on Miata.net in the garage section. There's a whole list of all the, the factory wheel weights that you can look up. If you've got a later car, especially if you've got a big brake kit, you may need to be concerned about if it fits over your brakes. But if you can afford a smaller, lighter weight wheel, it's a good way to shave some unsprung weight. Uh, NDs, we'll cover it here because we're already talking about wheels. NDs, you can get away with some 15 inch wheels. So uh, notable mentions are like our Kogeki wheels. So if you'd like, you can get away with some 15 by sevens and even eights, nines, that kind of stuff. Again, check your brake clearance before you slap them on and go driving down the road and scrape stuff off. But you can save a lot of weight that way. One of the things that also is good is that if you're doing this because you want to have a better gearing 
advantage with the smaller tire, you can have better acceleration. So if you're doing autocross or some kind of a small course where you're in first or second and maybe third-ish gear, and that's it, then you might want to go with a smaller diameter wheel and tire combo so that way you can have a gearing advantage on your car, not only the weight savings. Uh, NAs and NBs, there are some guys that out, are out there running around with even 13 inch wheels, so it's possible. Again, brake clearance is probably the biggest deal there, so if you're, if you're looking to get pretty extreme with it, that's a good way to go, but you'll need to do some homework checking that stuff out. Okay, uh, I briefly mentioned the Kogeki wheels. So obviously we have our own two brands of wheels, the Kogekis and the Tobus. The Kogekis are our flow formed wheels. We have them for NA, NB, NC, and ND. Just to cover the lightest options we carry, the 15 by sevens, which are new, check them out on the web store if you haven't already, link below. They are 11.7 pounds for the 15 by seven inch option. Super light, uh, also wider than the factory wheels that are like the 14 by five and a half or 14 by six that I was mentioning earlier. So you can get some slightly wider tires on them. We do have eights and nines too. Uh, for NCs, we have 17 by eights that are 15.6 pounds. And NDs, the Kogekis are 15.95 pounds. So all relatively light, not the lightest, lightest options out there, but all very close to the bottom of what you can get on the aftermarket for weight savings. Uh, the Kogekis, I'm sorry, the Tobus, those guys are available in the 17 by eights. Also new, we've got a few more on the web store. I think only two or three sets left. So if you haven't already seen the new Tobu forged wheels on our website, go check it out, link below. So the 17 by eights, that's the new size we just got. They are 14.55 pounds. Super stinking light for a 17 by eight wheel on your ND Miata. So if you're looking for uber lightweight, but still pretty wide performance, that's a great option to go. Of course, that is likely gonna cost you more than a set of used wheels. So this is where your budget comes into view. Um, another thing that's very popular to do, we've already talked about stock exhausts, but aftermarket exhaust systems are generally made of a thin wall stainless steel piping. And this is gonna be much lighter than a factory piece, which is all mild steel and relatively thick wall and just bulky in general. So the good thing about aftermarket exhaust systems is that not only are they lightweight, a lot of times they are better designed for flow and they're also usually larger diameter. So you can simply have more volume exiting the car at any given time. So performance benefit for power as well as weight savings. And of course, you know, there's plenty of flavors out there, so you can choose whichever one you like to listen to the most. Or if it's race car, you know, just go with the lightest, greatest, powerfulest, lowest restriction one. Um, another super, super common thing that Miata owners like to do are lightweight batteries. So your stock battery, probably around 25-ish pounds. I've seen some as much as nearly 30 pounds. So it just depends on which factory battery you have. You can get lightweight ones like this is a Odyssey. Um, this is one of the ones that if you've ever talked to Brandon, one of our engineers, um, he likes these quite a bit and they are great for weight savings because this is a 14 pound battery. Now you can even go lighter than this. I've seen some that are as much or I guess as little as almost 10 pounds. So you can get pretty crazy on weight savings with the battery. The only downside with these guys, of course, is that oftentimes they're much narrower or even shorter than the factory battery. So you may need to change your brackets to accommodate that change. But if you're willing to save some weight, that's usually just a, a couple of quick brackets away from making that happen. Okay, so we've covered some relatively basic stuff. Uh, let's move to the next category of, okay, I've done this stuff, it's the easy things, I want more. So we're gonna look at a bit more serious or dedicated. I don't know who left this here, but we're gonna talk about a little bit more serious for weight savings. So if you are looking to do this and, and you don't mind wrenching a little bit or going a little bit further to source your parts, 
let's talk about those things. Not quite race cars, still stuff that you might do on a street car, but starting to get off into that genre a little bit. Um, an easy thing that you can probably source for not a whole bunch of money if you have an NA Miata is get an NB starter. They're a little bit smaller. They aren't quite as powerful, granted, but they do save about a pound over the NA version of the starter. Easy thing for an NA guy to do. Um, the other model, sorry, there aren't really any great options there unless you start getting the, into custom fab with a aftermarket starter. A common one that a lot of people ask about is what if I remove the carpet? So carpet in NA, NB, and C and D Miatas, they're all about the same size. The later years, it's not as heavy because they've got uh, more plastic trim around the, the car than it does the NAs and NBs, which is mostly carpet covered surfaces almost everywhere. So NA and B Miatas, we weighed one um, full carpet set and it's about 15 pounds. So you can save about 15 pounds by pulling out all of your carpet. Uh, NCND owners, you're probably gonna get a little bit less than that in weight savings. The big downside here, if you want to do it, it's fine, but you are going to sacrifice some creature comfort because your car is suddenly gonna become quite a bit noisier. Your carpet has insulation, not only just in the carpet itself, but it has like a foam insulator underneath it, and that helps absorb a lot of sound, and it also absorbs some heat, so that way you're more comfortable in the cabin of the car where you don't wanna be next to the engine. So if you're okay giving that up, sure. Um, if you really wanna save 15 pounds, in my opinion, there's other places that are better to do that, but if you're at the point where you're looking for an extra 15 pounds, pulling out your carpet's not too bad of a deal to do it. Another one that's very common uh, for these kinds of guys is to remove the power steering. So you've got a pump, you've got lines, you have a small cooler, and then of course you've got some fluid that travels around all of this to make the magic happen. So by removing all of that gear, you're saving somewhere between about 10, 12, 13 pounds altogether, um, not even including fluid, I don't think. I think our measurements were just dry. So it's a good amount of weight, including the fluid. You're probably an extra pound there, you know, but a good amount of weight that's more towards the, the nose of the car that you can shave off. And if you like a manual steering input, then there you go, win-win. Some people don't. If you are curious about it, I recommend you go drive a friend's car that has manual steering and see what you think before you pull it out, but there's some weight savings if you want it. Likewise, another common thing to do is to remove the AC system. So the AC system is much more um, embedded throughout the car. You have pump, you have lines, you have a condenser, and then you also have your um, HVAC box and your evaporator core and all the stuff underneath the dash. So not only in the engine bay, but also in the car underneath the dash too. And you can save 30-ish pounds, you know, a little bit more than 30 pounds by removing a lot of that stuff. Um, and I mean, again, these are NANB measurements and Cs and Ds are probably gonna be close, but I haven't measured one of those, unfortunately. So much more time intensive to do because you do have to get under the dash if you wanna remove all of it. You could do a relatively basic scenario of just removing what's in the engine bay that's easy to get to or easier to get to. And you'll still save the majority of that, you know, probably 20 plus pounds because most of that's like the compressor, the brackets, uh, the lines, the condenser, you know, the big stuff in the engine bay. It's also hanging out towards the front of the car. So if you're trying to improve your weight balance, that's gonna be the meat and potatoes of the AC system weight. Um, downside, of course, is that you don't have AC. So if you live in a place that gets hot, maybe that's not a great mod for you. You can also remove the, uh, the heater core if you don't need heat. So if you live somewhere hot and you don't need heater, you could do that too. Uh, again, that's underneath the dash. So relatively effort um, intensive to get to it, but it is something that you can save a few pounds that way too. A lot of questions about this one. So what if you remove your soft top from the car? You know, say you've got a hard top or say this car lives inside and you only drive it on the weekends when it's nice and you don't really care if it has a soft top or not, you'd rather save the weight. Sure, have at it. Roughly 35 pounds. So pretty significant weight savings on the soft top. Uh, the one I measured was a plastic window, not even a glass window. So you can even save a few more pounds if you have a glass room window too. Um, NA and Bs are a little bit larger, have big frames. So if you have an NC and D, 
I haven't weighed one of those. Sorry. We've got some NC and ND stuff coming up, but uh, those ones I would imagine are probably similar or maybe slightly less because they are a little bit smaller than the NA and D tops. One that's common for like spec racers or autocrossers, kind of like when you're swapping down to a smaller diameter wheel, is to swap to smaller brakes. And one of the ways you can do that on the cheap is that if you have an NA and B, um, you can swap down to like a 1.6 liter brake setup. They've got the smallest rotors. The calipers aren't much smaller, but they're a little bit smaller. So if you're really looking to shave unsprung weight, they are a direct plug and play, bolted up and go kind of modification. You need the rotors, the brackets, and the uh, calipers themselves. But if you've got an NA or NB, all the 1.6 stock brake stuff bolts right up. Save a few pounds on each corner, no big deal. Um, you do, of course, lose some braking performance. So if it's a big course, you're probably gonna have brake fade or you'll be fighting brake fade often because you're losing that much more surface area from the larger rotors and the larger pads. But if you're looking for weight, that's an easy way to do it. A lot of 1.6 guys want to go to the bigger brakes. So in most cases, you may be able to just swap somebody, maybe even plus cash, <laughs> and get yourself some nice weight savings. Uh, of course, if you're looking to do something newer and shinier, there are also lots of big brake kits out there that will be a significant weight savings over stock, even though they do have a bigger caliper or even just a more efficient caliper. So great option for most Miatas uh, across the board would be like a little big brake kit. Our little big brake kits have a lightweight aluminum forged caliper and you can do it front and rear if you want. Uh, you save roughly four pounds per corner compared to the factory stuff because the, the factory calipers are cast iron. So you can do pretty good with a little big brake kit. And then of course, you can maintain your braking ratios if you wanna keep your stock rotor sizes or a lot of times if it's NANB, you can also go down and rotor size if you want to make that weight savings even more dramatic. So great option. Some of the big brake kits also out there, um, even though they have bigger calipers, are still gonna weigh less than the stock calipers. Um, for you ND owners, the Brembos that you got, some of them got with a, uh, a factory package or the, the sport package, those are good for stopping performance, but they are also cast calipers. So if you're looking to save some weight and you've got the Brembos, um, the Willwoods are forged aluminum. You'll save at least a couple of pounds per side on those as well. Um, this one is not as common because it kind of depends on the construction but some coilovers or aftermarket suspension setups use aluminum body shocks, and you can actually save quite a bit of weight going from a stock steel body shock, you know, whether it's actually a factory stock shock or if you're using Coney's or KYB's or something else like that. And if you go to an aluminum body shock like our Fox's, you can save a couple pounds per corner there because that's a pretty big chunk of metal. And if you're making it out of a strong lightweight aluminum rather than steel, that's a good place to save unsprung weight and, of course, get a performance upgrade for your suspension system all at the same time. Uh, another really common one that we get questions about are the hardtops. So we get asked about the factory hardtops and fiberglass or carbon fiber hardtops that are out there. Your factory, like NANB style hardtops, uh, I'm sorry, again, I don't have an NC or even the new ND aftermarket hardtops to weigh but NA and B's are right about 50-ish pounds, you know, with all the hardware on them. If you go with a fiberglass top and a Lexan window, you can get down to almost 15 pounds, you know, very, very lightweight. If you have a carbon fiber hard top, then you can get even lighter because of course, carbon fiber versus fiberglass. The downside there to the weight savings is that they're not as thick. They don't have as much insulation. Um, the glass window actually does quite a bit for reducing the amount of noise that comes through the top itself too. So uh, they're also very flexible if you don't really bolt the snot out of them to get them attached to the car. So they will flex, the wind will make them kind of wobble if you drive with the windows down, that kind of stuff. We generally recommend that more for the guys that either um, are racing or they don't care about NVH. So we're starting to get further and further away from the streetcar ethos of still maintaining some comfort. Um, this really boils down to what's your preference. Are you okay with a little bit more MVH? If you are, cool, and save 35 pounds. It's a great upgrade. 
um, you can get fiberglass and carbon fiber tops brand new from a lot of different companies. So a quick Google search if you're interested in that, but that's a good way to save weight if you currently have a factory hardtop. Um, they're also quite a bit less expensive than a factory hardtop right now. <laughs> so if you're in the market and that sounds like a good idea, uh, you might consider an aftermarket fiberglass one. Uh, speaking of the windows themselves, if you have a factory hardtop and you don't want to get rid of the factory hardtop, but you want to lose the weight of the glass, if you remove the glass and replace it with like a polycarbonate um, sheet, then you can save about six pounds. So, um, and that's also a good option. I've seen a few hardtops that are for sale used that have a busted rear window. Pick one of those up, put a par uh, polycarbonate rear lens on there or Lexan and you can do, you know, good used hardtop for cheaper and save six pounds over a glass window. Uh, another common one that I wouldn't say that this is a, a guaranteed way to lose weight because it depends on what you have, but are carbon fiber body pieces. So if you have a carbon fiber hood or carbon fiber trunk lid or fenders or something like that, um, those are cool. I, I definitely agree. I like carbon fiber. It looks awesome in a race car. You have to be careful though, because a lot of your different panels, especially if you get a newer car, are aluminum. So over here to my right, uh, your left, my right. Yeah. I have an NC trunk lid and that's aluminum. It weighs in just over nine pounds. So it's already very lightweight, even though it's a larger panel on the car, you know, Miatas are still small, but other than the, the hood, this is a relatively large panel on it. And you can get carbon fiber trunk lids for them. You can get carbon fiber hoods and fenders, all that kind of stuff. But remember, if you're replacing an aluminum component rather than a steel component, your weight savings may not be very much, if at all. We have a carbon fiber trunk lid that we've used on this car and weighing it, it doesn't come out any significant difference from the factory unit. So if you have a uh, NANB trunk lid, it's a steel trunk lid, you might get some weight savings out of that, but just be careful. Make sure that you're actually checking your weights for what a stock lid weighs versus a carbon fiber lid. Or if you're just into it for the carbon fiber, then that, that's cool too. But just be aware, it's not always a weight savings because a lot of the panels on these cars, especially the newer you go, are aluminum. So they're not that heavy. Okay, um, we're now going to well and truly enter race car tour territory. Um, some of these things are either not legal or downright unsafe to do on a street car. So I don't condone that you do it, but here are some things that are popular to do, common to do, especially for race cars. Uh, removing the wipers. So if you're really looking to get down and dirty with removing some weight, you can remove the wipers. Obviously, you're going to have to really rain X the heck out of your, your windscreen if you want to drive it in any kind of weather. But you can save a pound and a half or so on removing your wipers if you're really looking for it. <laughs> uh, airbags. So NANBs, this is more for you guys. But factory airbags like what's in the dash and what's in the steering wheel. Again, do not remove these from your street car. These are for your safety. They will help you in most cases rather than uh, the benefit that you can get from removing them. But if this is a race car, then you can save about, I think the steering wheel bag was about three and a half pounds and the dash airbag was about eight and a half pounds. So you can get a little something there. Um, you're on your own. Do this at your own risk, but please don't do it to your streetcar. Okay, moving on. Uh, side windows. So again, this is more race car stuff. You normally want windows on your streetcar, but if you're looking to shave all the weight you can and it's easy, it's actually pretty simple to take out the windows on most of these cars. And they're all right about six pounds, you know, your side windows. If you take out more of the guts, like the rails and the wiring on the car, then you can get closer to 10 to 12 pounds for what's in the doors. So 
it's a good option. And especially for most race cars, if you ever run into an instance where you bump something or somebody, uh, most of the time you don't want to have it smash your glass and then have to stop the track day to clean up. Uh, same thing with your airbags. You don't want to have those pop if you're in a small, just, you know, a little bit of bumper cars when you're going down the, the fast back straight or something like that. So sometimes for street or uh, sometimes for race cars, that is a safety thing just to prevent further issues from happening. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that came up that I'm sure at least some of you have probably heard of are ghetto sets. So what is that? Um, it's somebody's term that they had named for their car where instead of doing a real honest to goodness kit car to use the Miata drivetrain, they remove as many panels as they can to save weight from their car. So they remove trunk lid, hood, fenders, doors, and then sometimes even like de-skinning the rest of the, the car, the chassis, as much as they can down to bare bones of the structural bits and then build usually a cage or something like that around it to build back in some of that structural rigidity. Um, obviously, the more you remove, the more weight savings there are to be had, but also the uglier your car is going to be. So if you're dealing with a wrecked car, maybe that's an awesome choice for you for a track car. Um, most street cars are likely not going to go down that road unless you're into that thing. Maybe you're Mad Max. I don't know. Uh, race car seats. Hey, this is another really popular one. So what if you want to replace your stock seats and put in a super sweet carbon fiber race seat? There are tons of options out there. I won't even begin to dive down that path. Uh, most reputable seat manufacturers will list their weight savings, or at the very least, uh, at least they will list how much their seat weighs. So I won't even attempt to try to give you all of the different seats and what they weigh. Uh, go talk to the seat manufacturers to find that out. Stock seats, uh, NAs and NBs are going to be about 35 pounds. So NC and NDs, I think they're a little bit lighter, especially the NDs. They're actually hollow, if you didn't know that. Check it out. It's like a hammock. Wiring. So we are pretty far down the path of weight savings at this point, if you're looking at trying to skim out extra wiring from your car. It really depends. Um, a lot of people want to strip out wiring from their car to save weight, and you certainly can. It really depends on what you've done with the car and what you're okay removing or getting rid of, because obviously that wiring has a purpose. So if you get rid of your radio, you could potentially pull out your radio wiring if you get rid of your power windows, you could get rid of that wiring. Um, if you have a full standalone ECU that you've custom wired into the car and you don't need any of the chassis wiring at all, yeah, you can strip it out. You can save some weight. Um, if you really, really get pretty crazy with it, um, such as like, we'll just say, for example, Keith's Targa Miata you can strip out quite a bit of weight. You know, I think that his car for what he stripped out of the main body harness was almost 10 pounds. And when you think about, you know, what a single wire is, it's very lightweight. You don't notice it really, you know, one wire. But when you start to get to a bunch of spaghetti, multicolored spaghetti that you can pull out of the car because you don't need AC, you don't need radio, you don't need your power windows, you know, that kind of stuff, or you don't need your extra emissions equipment controls then yeah, you can start adding up some weight there. But this is usually aftermarket ECU, engine swap, you know, gutted race car kind of territory. So if you're running this in a street car and looking to do a bit of a wire shave, I would recommend you start somewhere else first. This is kind of a looking at scraping around and, and you know, brushing the dust out of the corners kind of solution. But you can get some out of it if you're at that point. Speaking of scraping down in the little nooks and crannies for little bitty weight savings, uh, we talked to a customer not too long ago that said he was gun drilling his control arm bol bolts. And if you don't know what that means, that means that if you're taking a bolt 
and you actually drill a hole all the way through it so that way it's hollow like a gun barrel. Um, obviously that's going to be relatively small amounts of weight that you're saving by removing that little bit of material from the inside of your bolts. It does also weaken them as well so if you don't know what you're doing probably leave that one alone but we thought that was a pretty interesting thing that uh, somebody was out there gun drilling their control arm bolts to make them that much lighter. Uh, Mazda would be proud with their new Graham strategy that they have touted with the ND Miata. They've always been lightweight, but I thought that was pretty interesting that they call it a Graham strategy, shaving little bits off of here and there. Um, and of course, the ultimate solution to weight loss, especially if you have an NA or an NB Miata, is to get a kit car. So Exosets, Catfish, uh, Westfields, there's a few different other ones, but if you're using a tubular style chassis kit car where you put the drivetrain from your Miata into this kit car, you're going to save a lot of weight. Exosets, depending on which one you get, you're going to be usually like 800 to 1,000 pounds lighter than a similar or you know same kind of Miata build using the same drivetrain. So... Um, some of the extreme ones, I think the Westfield, some of the Westfield kits were as much as like 1,200 pounds lighter than a stock Miata. So you can get pretty crazy out there. Look around if you're interested in that. If you're really looking to save as much weight as possible, just start with a kit car. You know, if this is a race car, or even there are places, some states, you can register those kit cars for the street. So if you're really looking to get serious about weight savings, look into a kit car. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. But if you're really looking to save on weight, absolutely, can't beat it. All right, um, we have rambled on and on and on and on. I've covered a lot of different topics. Let's take a quick break and see what comments are out there, what questions that I have not answered, if any. Do we have anything from the peanut gallery? I have rambled so much, you've all forgotten your questions, so my apologies. If you're watching this after the fact, um, please leave a comment down below, you know, whether this is YouTube, Facebook, whatever, we will answer it after the video. Um, actually, I'm getting somebody waving around. We got one more. Oh, we did get one. Excellent. Okay. So question is about removing the tow hooks on an NA or NB Miata. Sure. Um, probably good for a pound, maybe a little less. Um, two to three pounds each. Two to three pounds each. Hmm. Well, there you go. The public has spoken. Um, yes, you certainly can. And what he's talking about, or what they are talking about, sorry, I don't know if it's a he. Um, I don't know if this car has it. Probably doesn't. We may not have a car here that has them on there. It's uh, pretty common that the baby teeth that the NAs and NBs have from the factory that are used as tie-down points when they came over on the ocean from Japan to be delivered over here, uh, they have these baby teeth or tow hooks that are just bolted in. You can remove them. Um, so there you go. Extra. Actually, that's a, that's a really good one because that's easy weight savings. And most of the time you don't want to tow from those points like if you're actually getting towed out of a ditch or something like that because they're so close to the body work. So uh, that's a great one. I hadn't thought about it. So thank you very much for bringing that up. Easy weight savings of a few pounds to be able to get those out and actually make the mouth of the car look a little bit cleaner too at the same time. Okay, uh, anything else? Okay, again, I'm probably missing some that I'm not seeing here in the comments. Leave us comments down below. We will make sure to answer those after the video. Thank you again very much for watching. Um, one of the things, or I guess the, if you have to take away anything from this video is that there are so many options out there. The best thing you can do is weigh items yourself, what you have, and then compare that to something else. If you're using stock parts, swapping stock parts, if you're buying it from somebody or just got it for free, weigh it, check it out. See if you can actually find out what the weight savings is. Um, or if you're buying something that's an aftermarket component, make sure they're either giving you an apples to apples comparison on what that weight is, stock versus their component, or if they're giving you the whole weight of like a complete car, then make sure that you're getting the full story because a lot of times they may not be telling you that between this weight and that weight that they 
ran it down a half tank of gas. Or maybe they were taking stuff apart like the power steering system and they didn't measure the weight including fluid. So make sure that you're either getting fully dry or fully wet weights if they're comparing like weights on a car or removing those kinds of systems that have to deal with fluids. It is very important if you are looking to try to get the most bang for your buck for weight savings on aftermarket parts. For those of you that are interested because there was at least a few people that wanted to know how to make a sub 2000 pound Miata, there is a way um, and it's basically a conglomeration of all that we've talked about today. But if you'd like to actually see what it looks like to do that kind of a extensive weight savings, we'll put a comment down below and we will link you to the Targa Miata build where Keith actually removes a ton of weight from his Miata to get it race weight ready. You'll need a lot of time to read through it. There's lots of posts, but if you are looking to really dive deep, that'll be a good article for you. And with that, I think we're getting long in the tooth. Um, let's end it here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you'd like to talk to us about other weight savings techniques or other items that we didn't talk about today, feel free to give us a call. Send us an email at support at um, Also, if you haven't already, check out our new knowledge base, which is help.flymiata.com. More articles are being added there every day. It's relatively new, but if you're looking for Miata, just general information as well as information about Flying Miata and our products, that is being updated all the time with lots of helpful info. And it's totally free. Don't even have to sign up for it, it's that free. Thank you again, we appreciate you joining us today to talk about and listen about um, lots and lots of uh, silly ways to lose weight um, and some not so silly ways to lose weight, really. There are some very easy things out there to do that you can, you know, that doesn't detract from the car as a whole, but can save you a few pounds and make the driving experience that much better. So hopefully you learned something and we will see you next time on FM Live on Thursdays, two o'clock mountain. Thank you again. Have a great one.